On Sunday, the Giants and Jets faced the defending conference champions. At halftime, the G-Men had the lead and Gang Green was tied. Coming up, we'll dissect what led to both ending the day with a loss. Hello and welcome to Geico Sports Night. I'm Chris Williams and the Jets dropped a golden opportunity to shock the Pats. But first, the Giants looking to take a giant step in the right direction against the defending Super Bowl chance with their slim playoff hopes on the line. Giants in friendly Philly looking for their third straight win off to a quick start. First drive of the game, Eli Manning flips it to Saquon Barkley, little shovel pass. He finds the end zone for 13 yards. Giants go for two, don't get it, but they take an early 6-0 lead. Second quarter, Jeeman up nine, and it's Barkley again. This time, he rumbles 51 yards. Man, is he something special. Finds pay dirt. With that, Barkley breaks Odell Beckham's record for most yards from scrimmage by a rookie. Barkley finished with 101 yards on 13 carries. Giants up 19-3 now. But things fall, start to fall apart here. Carson Wentz hits Zach Ertz, powers his way into the end zone. Phillies goes for two and gets it 19-11 at the half. Third quarter now, 19-14. Josh Adams gives the Eagles their first lead of the game with the one-yard rushing TD. They go for two again, and they're up 22-19. Now, after an Aldrich Rosas field goal, even the game halfway through the fourth, Jake Elliott nails the 43-yarder with 22 seconds left in regulation. Shades of last September when Elliott beat the G-Men on a 61-yard field goal. Yeah, Eli, what's going on? One last chance for the Giants. But Odell Beckham is eventually taken down. His running the table prophecy will not come true. Giants blow a 16-point first half lead and lose the game 25-22. Now this game recap is presented by Geico. Manning threw for 297 in a TD, but one big pick at the end of the first half. Barkley scored two TDs and now has 12 total, which tied a Giants rookie record. Second half, G-Man disappeared. Only 56 yards. For more on the loss, we turn it over to SNY NFL insider Ralph Bacchiano. The Giants had a 16-point lead late in the first half, and by halftime, they were outgaining the Eagles by almost 200 yards and felt like they were well on their way to continuing their unlikely dream of winning the NFC East. But in the second half, their defense fell apart, Saquon Barkley disappeared, and Odell Beckham disappeared, and the Giants' playoff hopes, as slim as they were, ended up almost disappearing too. Here's the story of the second half, especially early. We, we weren't making the yards we need to on the plays we called, and we had penalties that knocked us off. And so then you get away from the stuff that you, you, you certainly would like to do, and that's, that's the deal. Knowing that they struggled in, in the secondary, um, personally, I would have I loved to attack them, um, but it, it wasn't in our game plan. So. So like I said multiple times, if I got carried the ball 20 times, if I got carried the ball three times, how many, how many times it takes to, to win a game, I'm willing to do. And, um, you know, we just didn't finish this game. And that's the difference. The Giants had plenty of reasons for what they all called a very frustrating second half, but there really was no good excuse when you consider that they had 346 first half yards, only 56 in the second. Saquon Barkley went from nine carries and 94 first half yards to four carries for seven yards in the second half. Pat Shermer has said over and over again that he knows he needs to ride his best players on offense. Well, he doesn't have any players better than Barkley and Beckham, and to ignore them like that, well, that's a pretty obvious reason why the Giants ended up blowing this game. With the Giants, Ralph Facciano, SNY. Thanks, Ralph. Time for Football Night in New York. I'm joined by Sal Licata and John Jastrzemski. Sal, I'll start with you. Mm -hmm. This Giants team, 346 yards in the first half, didn't even top 100 in a second. How much to blame is Pat Shermer for this performance? Well, I, I think he gets some of the blame, J.J., but he's not the main culprit in why the Giants didn't do anything in the second half. You look at it, they just were not an effective football team. Everybody's going to talk about the offense. You want to talk about it in Ralph's package. Oh, well, they got to get Odell involved. they got to get Saquon involved. Well, when Eli tries to force the football at the end of the first half to Odell Beckham Jr., everybody say, well, he should have thrown underneath and taken the three points. So mistakes by the quarterback back ineptitude by the offensive line at times stupid penalties guys not making plays how about the defense trying to stop the run which they couldn't do in the second half and obviously Pat Shermer with the play calling a little bit of an issue I thought aggressive early on in the game to stupidity trying to go for two points instead of just taking the uh, extra point making it seven nothing so Shermer's done some bad things but overall to me it was a collective effort to why this team failed in the second half look they left five points on the board you think about that two-point play which absolutely needs to be converted 
David. You think about the end of the first half, to your point, Eli Manning's got to be smarter with the football. That's an inexcusable throw. It allowed the Eagles to have momentum going into the locker room. But then you get to the second half, and that is where Pat Shermer is to blame. I'm sorry. Saquon Barkley is a stud. Saquon Barkley needs to be involved. And for him to only have four or five carries, that's absurd. Sal, that can't happen. And that's where you look at the head coach. Because in that second half, the Eagles come storming back. And yes, the Giant defense could not stop the run. Yes, the Giant defense right. got torched. But you have a chance to maybe regain control of that game if Saquon Barkley is going to be Saquon Barkley. One thing real quick. Eagles did a better job against Barkley in the limited touches that he did have in the second half. But the excuse that Shermer had to give him some rest, that makes no, no sense. That's absurd. I, I thought mean, he might have been hurt. That yeah, was the issue to me. Makes, I thought he might have been hurt. Yeah, that's no, that makes no sense at it's all. It's halftime. So you've got 20 minutes already to rest. <laughs> right. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, so with the loss, their postseason chances are pretty much over. Going forward, do you trust J.J., Pat Shermer, as the head coach? I think the jury's out on that. I mean, look, you look at his tenure in Cleveland, it was terrible. He was a bad football coach with the Cleveland Browns. With the Giants right now, it's one year. It's been a disappointing year. I want to see how this locker room stays together. I want to see how they finish up the year. But I, I can't definitively say, Sal, Chris, that I'm done with Pat Shermer or I don't buy Pat Shermer because, to be honest with you, I don't really, really know. I mean, he's coached only a handful of games here. It hasn't been very good. But what bothers me about Shermer at the end of these games seems like there's way too much acceptance of when things go wrong of, oh, we got to do this better, we got to do that better. Well, I need to see the results. That's been the issue so far to me with Shermer. Almost a little bit too much accepting of the losing and the culture that's going on. Yeah, at, at times I feel like there's been positive decisions from Shermer or positive things that he's talked about trying to get this club to learn how to win again. Look, he took, took over a brutal situation. But then you watch him in-game management. Why is he going for two the first touchdown of the game? It makes no sense. You kick the extra point. That is it. I don't care about the penalty moving it closer. It is an asinine decision. And the other thing I want to get to real quick, the idea that postseason and the New York Giants will be brought up is insulting. Prior to this game, <laughs> after this game, this is a bad football team. We've seen it for two years. They had three wins coming in. They obviously got beat by Philadelphia today. But to talk about postseason, J.J., with this team, I find it very insulting for an organization that has, in recent history, had some success winning a couple Super Bowls. Well, Bowl. it's amateur hour. It speaks to the NFC East. I mean, the NFC yeah. East is not a good division. But you look at Washington, you look at Dallas, and you look at Philadelphia, all three of these teams are much better than the New York Giants. And to Sal's point, the idea of being a team in playoff conversation yeah. when you're 0-4 in a division, it's all you need to know. Playoffs, Giants, Betty, bye. See you later. <laughs> yeah, it was going to take a miracle for them to get into the Inside postseason. straight, Royal Flush. Yeah, right. Yeah, Royal Flush. Uh, but that's not happening. Sal, JJ, thanks for stopping by. Still ahead on Geico Sports Night. Plenty more from Philly. We'll hear from Eli Manning after an unsuccessful performance against the rivals down the turnpike. Also ahead, Bill Belichick made the right halftime adjustments once again, while Todd Bowles made another questionable decision once again. We'll dissect the Jets' five-game losing streak when we return. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com for a free rate quote. Once I started looking for car insurance, it was a no-brainer. I switched to Geico and saved hundreds. That's a win. But it's not the only reason I switched. The Geico app makes it easy to manage my policy. I can pay my bill, add a new driver, or even file a claim. Woo! Hey now, that's a win-win. Thank you. Switch to Geico. It's a win-win. Raise your hand if you think somebody made mattress shopping way too complicated. Now raise your hand if you want choice without spending big bucks. Get my Bobopedic Eclipse Gel or my Bobopedic Eclipse Hybrid, each only $5.99 for the queen size set. Just need the mattress, only $3.99 each. Now raise your hand if that sounds like a great deal. Bob's Discount Furniture. Shop in store or at mybobs.com.
Place your deposit for 2019 New York Jets season tickets today. Don't miss exciting matchups with the Giants, Cowboys, Steelers, Patriots, and more. Lock in the lowest ticket prices and receive exclusive benefits at nyjets.com slash season tickets. I gained 53 pounds. Did she say gain weight? <laughs> I gained 53 pounds with CB1 Weight Gainer. That's right. Introducing CB1 Weight Gainer, the weight gain pill. I've been skinny most of my life. CB1 Weight Gainer totally changed my life. CB1 Weight Gainer is a safe, effective, and patented weight gain pill. I searched and searched online, and I finally found CB1 Weight Gainer. It took me only three months to gain 30 pounds. I went from 150 to 175 in just three months. All in all, I gained 53 pounds, and I'm super pumped. I look and feel better than ever. Gain the weight you want or your money back guaranteed. Order today and we'll include the exclusive weight gain guidebook. A $19.99 value free. Call now and we'll also upgrade your order to rush processing. A $6.99 value absolutely free. That's right. Save over $25 when you call or visit CB1WeightGainer.com now. Tuesday, UConn men's basketball returns to SNY. Coach Hurley looks to lead his Huskies to another win at home as they tip off against the Riverhawks at Campbell. Coverage begins with pregame, Tuesday at 6.30, only at SNY. SNY.TV, all things New York sports, all on one site with easy access to up-to-the-minute news on all of your favorite New York area teams, only on SNY.TV, your online home of all things New York sports. The reeling Jets hosting the first place Patriots. Hey, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Tom Brady is 12 and 4 against the Jets on the road in the regular season. The 41 year old made Josh McCown the spring chicken in this QB matchup. McCown in for the injured Sam Darnold, and the 39 year old vet gets the Jets an early lead. Connects with Jermaine Kurz for the 16 yard score. Good start for the Jets, who grab a 7 0 lead. But a big turn of events later in the quarter. Patriots. Flag for offensive pass interference on third down. James White sets an illegal pick, but instead of declining the penalty to set up fourth and two, Todd Bowles accepts the call to make it third and 12. Probably shouldn't have done that when the Patriots have Tom Brady at QB. He hooks up with Rob Gronkowski from 34 yards out. Gronk back with a vengeance after two games out with an injury. Pats take advantage of a second chance tied at seven. Now 13 all in the third, Julian Edelman. Finds a nice little soft spot in the Jets secondary. Tie-breaking score from 21 yards out, and the Patriots go on top 2013. Now, a big problem for the Jets all day was stopping the run. As rookie Sony Michelle scampered for 133 of the team's 215 rushing yards, the most the Jets have allowed in a game this season. Jets fall to 3-8 after a fifth straight loss, 27-13 the final. Now, this game recap is presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Brady McCow with a bit of a duel, 283 for Brady. He's now the NFL's career leader in total passing yards, regular and postseason combined. McCow aired out 276, one pick for him. Meanwhile, the Jets D had no answer for Sony Michelle, 133 on the ground, most by a New England player since 2014. Now, McCow, he was not very happy after the loss. It sucks, you know. I mean, it's not. It's obviously it's not ideal, and and uh, and. Uh, it, it, I think individually, you know, it tests, it's a, it's a test, you know, and, and uh, it tests who you are and what you're about. Right before they scored their first touchdown, you had a chance to decline that pass interference. Third and 12 were good odds for us. We've been pretty good at third and 12. We knew they kind of would have went for it on fourth and two. We figured if we backed them up, we had a chance to kick a field goal, and it didn't work out. We're going to figure it out. Um, do I know when? Do I know the timetable? No. But all I can do is just continue to do my part um, as a leader on this football team and, you know, a player on this team is just do my job and continue to, you know, help those around me get better. Sal and JJ are back, and Jamal Adams says we're going to figure it out. I don't know when. <laughs> I don't say good luck. <laughs> right, you know. Um, but who do you think should get more blame for the way this team is playing? Five straight losses, Sal. Uh, look, there's a lot of blame, obviously, to go around. I think coaching is the least of it, J.J. I'm not saying that it's not a problem, but I look at the personnel that's out there. So you look at McCagney obviously bringing these players in, and then the players themselves not getting it done. So you can, And by the way, if you want to go to coaching, outside of Bulls, I'll go to the offensive coordinator first because I don't know what Bates is doing. He's terrible at designing plays, throwing the ball 50 times with Josh McCown. It's obviously a culmination of a lot of different things with the Jets. If I had to pinpoint the blame, though, 
well. First, I go the person who's bringing in these players who aren't getting the job done. Then I would blame the head coach. Look, it's all of the above. The Jets are a bad football team, period. They are poorly coached. They have not been put together in the right way. And you look at them Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, they continue to be mistakes. But, Sal, here's my problem with Bowles. Right. You're going up against a great quarterback, probably the best quarterback to ever play. The idea of thinking that decline or accepting a penalty and pushing them back there, I mean, at least force the Patriots' hands and put them in a fourth down situation. These are the sort of coaching mistakes we see week in and week out. Then you look at the offensive staff, and I agree with you. Bates is a nightmare. He's a disaster. And he was supposed to be an up-and-comer, by but the here, way. But here's the problem, though, Sal. Who is responsible for all of these coaches? When it's your coaching staff, it's your baby at the end of the day. So, yes, McCagnan has done a bad job. Right now, Todd Bowles has done a bad job. And then you look at the overall roster. I mean, where are the playmakers on this team? You think about the defensive players on this team. Right. Todd Bowles is supposed to be this defensive wizard. They're giving up 450 and 500 yards of offense. That is not exactly an ideal recipe to beat a team as good as the New England Patriots. I think the biggest problem for Bowles has been the lack of consistent defense from this team. I mean, that's the one thing he's supposed to be able to hang his hat on. And they have some defensive players, and they haven't been a good unit at all. Decision-making, all right. That's a little. right. You're playing a little scared there with the Patriots in your head, fourth and two. You know that they're going to go for it, so instead you force them back, and obviously they get it anyway. So that's, that is mismanagement right there, letting the opponent get in your head. But he's not the, the sole reason why this team is bad. I mean, Trumaine Johnson, you and I, or at least I would think we both love that no, signing. I like the signing. Anyway, I love the signing. He's, he's been a bust. So the players who were brought in by McCagnan haven't been good either. I understand Bowles is not absolved from blame. Certainly all blame should go around but with this But does the coach team. get the most out of this team? I don't buy it. They're they a they losing could, team they could do better than Bowles. Straight years. Yeah, gotta go. But but here's the one thing: you look at the quarterbacks Bowles has had since he's been here. Ryan Fitzpatrick, Josh McCown, and an overmatched rookie quarterback you know in what, Sam though? Darnold. He did get two good years out of Fitzpatrick and McCown. He did. Maybe more than most would have, though. So I think that's but a end result: thing. losing record, losing record. Yeah, losing. It's it's a disaster. Okay, I think we can all can agree on that. Five straight games for the Jets that they have had zero turnovers. Definitely want to correct that going forward. Sal, JJ, thanks so much. All right, more gang green when we return. Our Jets postgame live crew joins the show to discuss where the blame lies on this five-game losing skid. Plus, after his controversial firing 12 months ago, David Fizdale made his return to Memphis. Could his Knicks exact some revenge for their head coach in a game that went down to the wire? Highlights coming up. Download the new DraftKings Sportsbook app today, and they'll instantly match your first bet up to $200. But make sure you use code SNY at sign up. There's no playthrough requirement. That's code SNY, and DraftKings will instantly match your first bet up to $200. Working seven days a week for up to nine months straight isn't always easy. But when you're built to serve, Sometimes hard work doesn't seem like work at all. Hurry into the Ram Black Friday sales event for great deals and make more than your holidays special. Or well-qualified lessees of competitive vehicles get a low-mileage lease on select 2019 Ram 1500 Classic models for $189 a month. I Phil Swift here for Flex Glue, the super strong rubberized glue. Flex Glue's a powerful adhesive with amazing instant grab. It locks into place, and it holds on tight. Flex glue acts like a magnet. Even this heavy brick is going to stick. And our pro formula has even more instant grab, so you can tackle the biggest jobs. Now there's flex glue for everything you do. With flex glue, you don't need screws or nails, making it perfect for all types of repairs. Not only does Flex Glue have amazing instant grab, but it actually gets stronger over time. And once it reaches maximum strength, Flex Glue can easily lift over a thousand pounds. Indoor and outdoor projects, virtually any material in all conditions, wood, glass, tile, and metal, Flex Glue is so strong, it even works underwater. So you can apply Flex Glue underwater, and it even dries underwater. This rubberized adhesive is UV resistant and totally waterproof. To show you the power of Flex Glue, we took all these parts and Flex Glued them together. 
and built the Flex Glue Monster 4x4. Slamming into giant logs and rocks, Flex Glue's powerful bond withstands the shocks and holds this beast together. Now any project, big or small, with Flex Glue, you can do them all. You can get Flex Glue plus a handy size of either Flex Seal, Flex Shot, or Flex Tape for just $19.99. Call now. David Fisdale made his return to Memphis Sunday on Friday. He said, quote, I haven't even really had time to think about it, to be honest with you, but I, want, I don't want to put too much stock into that. Yeah, okay, Coach Fisdale. Fisdale's former player Mike Conley showing him some love before the game. We pick it up with less than five to go in the fourth. Knicks leading by two. Conley creates some space for himself and nails a deep two-pointer to tie the game at 89. Less than three to go. Knicks down by two. Noah Vonley sets a screen for Tim Hardaway, who drains a three to give the Knicks the lead. Less than two minutes to go now. Knicks up by one. Trey Burke gets the steal and sets up Emmanuel Moutier for the monster jam plus the foul. Let's take another look. He would make the free throw to complete the three-point play. Knicks would go on to win 103-98. to This is their first three-game win streak since December of last season. Now, the Eagles weren't the only Philly sports team to pin a tough loss on a New York squad. Jimmy Butler... Ice water in his veins. Go ahead, three with just four tenths of a second left. 76ers go on for a 127-125 win over the Nets. All right, so the Giants, you know, they got our hopes up in the first half, then collapsed in the second, to say the least. Gave up 14 points in the second and managed a whopping 56 yards of not passing yards, but total offense. This one hurts for Manning because he knows they could have done something special. Disappointment's always about the same, um, you know, when you don't win and, and, you know, felt like we had a good plan and had an opportunity to. So just, uh, um, you know, got, got, got off, got off uh, you know, got off to a good start, just weren't able to finish it. We wanted to win this game and kind of get, keep things going and give yourself, keep, you know, stay in the hunt, keep, keep fighting. And, and uh, you know, the goal is to win, you know, every game you play. And, um, you know, disappointed we, we didn't, we didn't uh, take advantage of this one. Time for our Nissan Tweet of the Day. Ralph Vacchiano summing it up. Saquon Barkley's first three halves against the Eagles this season, 37 touches, 360 yards. But in the second half, second half on Sunday, five touches, 11 yards. Giants now losers in both games against Philly this year. The Jets now have a 98% chance of missing the playoffs after their fifth straight loss. Sure, they showed some fight and grit this time, but there are no moral victories in the NFL. For more on the loss, here's Jonas Schwartz in our Jets postgame live crew. Thanks, Chris. I'm happy to be alongside Ray Lucas, Willie Colon, Bart Scott. The losing streak now stands at five for the New York Jets. Ray, what has gone wrong here? How do we account for this five-game losing streak? Well, you know, it, it's a, I think it's a lot of different things. But at the same time, when you look at, like, today's matchup, 500 yards of defense gave up. You know, I, I, a lot of people at home are probably saying, really? They gave up 500 yards. And the fact that they Average six per rush for the New England Patriots. Listen, their two running backs are decent. They run between the tackles, but they use that more of a change of pace so Tom Brady can get the ball down the field. Um, first half was pretty good, but again, you know, you look at Todd Bowles and you say to yourself, is this guy on the hot seat? And with the record that he has right now, I would have to say definitely yes. But at the same time, you know, where was the hustle at the end of the game? You're down two scores and you're huddling up before you get in, before the two-minute drill. There's like maybe 20 seconds before the two-minute. You should be rushing to get another play in there, and they didn't. You can't just point it at Todd Bowles, and that's not what I'm here to do. I'm just saying it's this thing spreads around just about everybody. Yo, Willie, what's going on in this five-game losing streak? Well, I think the, I think the narrative has changed, right? You started the year talking about the Velma, Sam Darnold, how getting him ready, getting him enough experience, putting enough pieces around him so he can be the ultimate quarterback you need him to be. And then roughly around the Miami game, that narrative change he started playing bad he started regressing and all of a sudden well is it about Sam or is it about winning by that point the team was lost there was no identity we've been talking about it all show and now it's, it's hard to ask a group of men now to switch course all right now you have Sam sitting on the bench you have new now you have an old quarterback in Josh McCown and you have a defense right now that doesn't have another playmaker outside of Jamal Adams Marcus May has been in and out of the lineup they don't have a pass rusher they can't stop the run you can't find Lena Williams so now what are we talking about who are the New York Jets and we're asking that question at week 13 Team, that's losing. Never a good situation when you're asking that question, Bart. 
I mean, not to beat a dead horse, but, you know, you know, they don't have an identity. And when you don't have an identity, you don't have a style of play. You don't know how you're going to try and win. When you have a, a style of play, you have identity, you force your will. You impose your will on your opponent. And when you do that, you're saying, we're going to win this way. And if you beat us this way, then, you know, then so be it. But we, we're going to be physical. When I was here, right, it was ground and pound. Great defense, short fields, run the football, take the air out of the game and give you body blows and hope that we can beat you in the, in, in the fourth quarter if we don't knock you out early. This team, I don't know. They've been a spread team. They've been a team against the Denver Broncos that run the ball for over 200 yards. I don't see the commitment to anything. This seems like the coaches are searching for answers. And by week 13, if you're a coach searching for answers, then you may not be the solution. Uh, three and three feels like a long time ago yeah. with this Jets team. There's no question about it. For Ray, William, Bart, let's send it back to you, Chris. All right, thanks, Jonas. Look out for the latest edition of the Jetstream podcast on Tuesday, starring Willie and Jonas. Just search Jetstream in the iPhone podcast app or wherever you listen to your podcast. Coming up, the Mets are canvassing the top tier of the relief market. Which arm could be at the top of their wish list? We ignite the hot stove next on Geico Sports Night. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com for a free rate quote. I can't believe it. That grandpa's nose is performing fly of the bumblebee? Now, you goof. I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on my car insurance with Geico. Nice. I know, right? Believe it, Geico could save you 15% or more on car insurance. At My Bob's Discount Furniture, you get my Forte reclining sofa and reclining love seat for only $9.99. And it comes in two colors. You can also get my Navigator reclining sofa and reclining love seat, both pieces only $9.99. Or upgrade to the power versions of the Forte of the Navigator for only $11.99. So you can recline with the touch of a button. Charge your phone in a snap and spend more of your hard earned money outside the home. Because furniture isn't everything, you know. <gasps> Did I just say that out loud? Bob's Discount Furniture. <laughs> wow! Whoa! Wait, what? Everyone's excited about the Chevy vehicles at the Chevy Black Friday sales event. I could get used to this. Wow. And you will be too when you get 0% financing on our award-winning Chevy cars, trucks, and SUVs. How is that even possible? It's the Black Friday sales event. Current qualified competitive lessees can also lease this 2019 Equinox for around $199 a month. Or get 0% financing for 72 months on most 2019 Equinox models when you purchase. Hey guys, we're here at Catching Astoria, Queens, the site of the Queens Baseball Convention, giving you the rundown of who and what will be here on January 19th, 2019. New York Mets greats Keith Hernandez, Edgardo Alfonso, and Ed Cranepool will be here doing panels and signing autographs. We also have more panels, vendors, mascots, and great food. Buy your tickets at queensbaseballconvention.com. For tickets and info, go to queensbaseballconvention.com. Okay, we got it. Let's go. Go? Are you kidding? I need to stay. I want to be first in line. Time for the Ram Rumor Report. According to John Morosi, the Mets are actively interested in reliever Andrew Miller. The versatile lefty would be reunited with Mickey Calloway if he came to Queens. Miller is also drawing interest from the Cardinals and Phillies. SNY's Andy Martino reported earlier this month the Mets had requested medicals on Miller. 
That does it for Geico Sports Night. I'm Chris Williamson. We've got a fresh edition of the show ahead with plenty of reaction to both local football losses. Keep it locked here on SNY.